In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. So yesterday was a very proud day for me in the life of St. James. Uh, it was the day that we ordained uh, Selden Walker. Uh, Selden was raised by this parish. He served as an acolyte, just like the acolytes we have here. He eventually uh, came back after college and getting married, uh, led our acolytes and uh, worked with our youth group and uh, yesterday was ordained with several others to the priesthood. So it was incredibly, uh, it was an incredibly proud moment to see him uh, ordained, to see his wife April there uh, with, uh, with pride, a joint partner in their ministry and, and also in uh, uh, mothering twins that will be here any minute. Uh, and uh, it also was heartening to see all of those familiar faces from St. James that were there to support him, uh, and to know that there were people back here in Warrington that were either unable to attend because they were uh, cutting and distributing wood for our wood ministry or here practicing uh, for tonight's concert. Uh, it was one of those moments where I just felt the sense of pride uh, wash over me. Uh, and it was a beautiful liturgy. It's a beautiful... Uh, ordination is a pretty special uh, service. Uh, and there's a moment that I still remember from my ordination some 15 years ago um, that I, I felt in a different way as it was Selden there. And um, it's this moment where we, um, where we pray the Holy Spirit upon uh, the ordinands, uh, where we uh, confer uh, with all of the hands of all of the clergy that are there gathered around with their hands uh, on uh, Selden's shoulder. So, of course, for me, it was like this. Um, uh, but as uh, we were there, and, I, uh, and as we do this, uh, uh, they're singing uh, in this beautiful chant, uh, Veni Sancta Spiritus, Come Holy Spirit. Um, and, and then we pray, uh, the bishop prays over each one of the, the ordinands, and it's a beautiful moment. And I started to think to myself, uh, and it was only exacerbated uh, afterward when Selden uh, uh, you know, uh, paid me a compliment about how influential I was in his decision to go to priesthood. Uh, and instead of it feeling like flattery, all of a sudden I was struck with object fear, uh, just as I did when I had my hands there wondering, what did I confer on him? Uh, what did he see as he witnessed ministry here at St. James? Did I adequately show him the importance of loving each member of the congregation? of ministering equally across uh, party, across age. Uh, was I patient? Did I take time? Uh, did he see me taking time for each parishioner? Did he see a balance uh, and a harmony uh, in my ministry, a peace, uh, a sense of, of prayerful duty? Did, was my preaching uh, engaging and dynamic and prophetic? And was there a balance between the prophetic and the nurturing and caring? Did I balance that responsibility of pushing this congregation to go to places that scare them to death with the fact that this is a place of peace where you can take your fears and leave them at the door and come in and take a deep breath and know that you are loved and you are safe and you can heal here? Did we balance all of those things? As he goes out and he begins his ministry what has he taken from each one of us here? What does ministry look like? It's kind of daunting, isn't it? Uh, somebody who's going out and is going to uh, have 30 plus years of ordained ministry has been shaped by all of us and by the way that we have reflected uh, God's church to him. And then uh, we had John the Baptist come and talk to us. And not only does he give us a warning and a message of what's to come, but he also gives us an example. Uh, and then that scared me even more, because if there's one thing that I'm not, other than the beard, uh, I don't think there's much resemblance between my ministry and John the Baptist. Uh, he scared people to death. Uh, I generally see fear in someone's eye, and I try to put my arms around him and say, it's going to be okay. Uh, and as soon as I start getting uh, too sharp tooth and I see people looking like this, I want to put my arms around him and say, it's okay, you're doing a great job. What are we called to do? What does faithfulness look like? How do we live into John the Baptist's example? Because he had some pointed truths to tell people. The church is leaving people out in the cold. The church is leaving people hungry. The 
church is leaving people outside of God's loving embrace. And as you prepare yourselves for something beyond your imagination, as you prepare yourself for God to come into the world, don't just sit there right where you are with your arms like this and expect a, a, a baby in swaddling claws to land in your arms. Go towards the God that you expect to find. Shape your lives towards that God who made you, that God who calls you to have sharp teeth for justice, to give voice to the voiceless, to be careful when you feel too comfortable. How are we following that example? It's not easy. It's not easy. When I think about uh, St. James and the search process we went through some six years ago, uh, and I think about whether John uh, uh, put his name in the hat for that position, I can only imagine the interview. It would have been a, a, a little bit rocky. I picture John the Baptist somewhat like, uh, you know, you've seen those movies, the, uh, the pastor from the Midwest during the Dust Bowl, uh, where, you know, his vigor and his anger uh, seemed to meet the anxiety and the restlessness uh, and the fear of those that were gathered around. Um, but I imagine he would have gotten about five minutes into the uh, first interview, and uh, after he called him a brood of vipers, um, they, they, would have had, they would have decided that this might not go very well. And then as he told them uh, that the ax was at the uh, root of the tree, uh, that might not have been a good model for their five-year plan for ministry. Um, and when he uh, was asked what his ministry might look like, when he described it like uh, bleaching the congregation with fuller soap or uh, putting the congregation through a refiner's fire, uh, they might have decided that a softer route, uh, a gentler route, might have been uh, more preferable. Um, and I'm one that seems to uh, uh, want to use more of a dust cloth um, or very, very fine sandpaper uh, than a refiner's fire. But we still have that same commandment, that same call. How are we preparing ourselves? How are we getting our lives ready for something that can transform it? How are we preparing for a light to come into the world? How are we willing to be shaken? How deep are we digging? We are proclaiming that we are Christ's hands and feet, uh, that we are the church. How deep are we willing to go? How deep are we willing to go into study of scripture? How deep are we willing to go into service to the community? How do we turn our generosity into something more than that? Into a solidarity where the least, the lost, and those that are most hungry for light see us as brothers and sisters standing in solidarity, not just being willing to be generous with our time and our resources. How do we transform our hearts? How do we hear John a little bit differently and prepare our lives for something new? That's part of our Advent journey. Those are Advent, Advent-rich questions. But the other side of Advent is it's a season of profound hope. Not just the Easter hope that in the end God takes care of everything, uh, but the hope that God comes into our lives and is willing to walk with us, to take us gently by the hand, that prayer, that last line of that prayer that we prayed before we lit those candles, a God who takes us by the hand and walks beside us, the incarnational promise uh, that when we are ready to change, when we're ready to repent, which is changing our mind uh, in, in a rich, rich, and deep and meaningful way, that it's possible that God will walk with us and encourage us to walk out here by a different way, to be transformed, to be a haven and a place where light can shine more boldly. So listen carefully, not just to the words of John the Baptist, but to his example, and ask where is God challenging you to meet him in a new place? So when that child is born, we're not right where we were, but are rushing to meet him that light that will break into the world. Amen.